Oh. Oh. Awesome. Mutagen, zombies, and survival horror? Things are about to get crazy. Today we are reacting to the insanely popular video game Resident Evil. How accurate are their medical scenes and injuries? We're about to find out. Let's dive right in. Oh, what is it pouring on that? Wait, is, oh, holy cow. <laughs> this is in a video game? We don't have anything in the emergency department that you can actually pour on to re-stick things back together. We have Dermabond, which is like a wound adhesive, but then to reattach a limb, you gotta reattach the blood vessels, you gotta reattach the nerves that they can find them, all the musculature, tendons, attachments. Nice. Over this laceration, you always worry about how deep it goes. Does it just go through the skin? Does it go through the subcutaneous fat? Then does it go into the muscle? We look to explore these things to see if we need to do multi layer closures. We gotta put the fascia back together, you gotta put your muscles back together. We can rebuild him, we have the technology. Oh, right through the hand! Straight through the hand, you always worry about fractures. You have to worry about both sides sewing that up. You may not want to fully close it because you'll lock in any germs that are already there even though you wash it out really well. Sometimes it needs to go to the operating room to get cleaned out, washed out, placed on antibiotics. Oh, what? Are you kidding me? A shovel to chop off the leg? Even when it's separated like that, you actually still believe you kind of have the leg there. It's called phantom limb syndrome. Oh, that's just messed up. What is that? Strong first aid medicine. If he's bleeding out, sometimes there's a medication that we use, TXA, the medicine that helps decrease bleeding. Oh my gosh, okay, perfect. We see the leg with the missing limb. Now this is an indication for a tourniquet. If you put the tourniquet on above the knee, you increase the risk of tissue breakdown and ischemia to anything distal, distal meaning further down the road. If you do it just below, then you're just taking care of that section and stopping the bleeding. Oh, it's the magic medicine. I wonder how strong of a connection that binds to it. Somebody will ask, how long does it take for it to heal? You take the stitches out in say seven to 10 days, but that thing is gonna heal and form scar tissue over a long period of time, even up to six months, even to a year. What's she doing? It Driver. When I said many times in the past, don't pull it out. In this situation, you have to. You can actually hold direct pressure if you're having a significant amount of bleeding. In this situation, pull it out and then use it against that individual zombie woman. There it is. Do it. Go. Come on. Oh man, the twisted. Don't try to twist that. That's gonna hurt so bad. Yank it. Come on. You can actually even use your other hand together to pull it out and then pull it off because it's probably stuck in the wood or whatever it's attached to on that other end. Yes, he's getting it out. Yes. Oh, wow. Just destroying him. Blood smatter on the screen is never a good sign. Oh, get him. Bit. Run away. Let's see what the hand looks like. <gasps> Damn. They did a really good job of showing anatomy to make it look real. But in that situation, hold the rack pressure, put a dressing around it, see if it stops. Some friends of mine who are in the military said they were even told just to throw dirt in there just to stop the wound in this situation. Oh, he's got an arrow through his thigh. Besides going through the soft tissue, did it go directly into the femur? And if that arrowhead's like stuck in the femur, it's gonna be really hard to pull out. Not so bad. If this happens to you walking down the street and you randomly get shot by an arrow, don't pull it out. You can snip it so it's not just this big thing just sticking out. Get to the hospital. Nice. Uh, nothing like a good staple gun. We use a staple gun all the time in the emergency department. It's actually quite useful in scalp lacerations, large lacerations anywhere in the body. It actually grabs the tissue and pulls it together. Oh, nice barbed wire. That's never good. <sighs> Tennis doesn't just form on rusty things, so to speak. We always worry about it when it's related to dirty wounds in general. When's the last time you got a tetanus shot? Was it within the last five to 10 years? If it's definitely greater than 10 years, we're gonna give you an updated Tdap is what we call it. 
Oh man, look, look at that, that is amazing. But you can see the bone sticking out of the top. That needs to be rondured down or broken off and the tissue wrapped around it and it's just gonna be a stump. It's wrapping it, nice work. All right, that's pretty good. The way that it's wrapped is how we would do it. You typically probably wrap it a little bit further down the wrist if you had enough of the gauze or the curlics, whatever type of material that you're using. Oh, man. Could you rip through it this direction? Yeah, you probably could if you had enough force and the object was sharp enough to go through there. But you really, 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 really have to pull. Our tissue is very elastic, so it may not rip as easy as you'd want it to in this situation. Wow, he's being hung up. And yeah, perfect. You can see ripped right through it. You got the metacarpals here that turn into your phalanx of your fingers. Split right down the middle. Oh. oh! Awesome! The anatomy looks pretty good. Major arteries run with major veins as well as the nerve. Not every single vessel in the body that way, but majority of them. Oh, it's so good, the blood splatter. I love it, it's like crazy. No, it would go. You could have arterial bleeding and venous bleeding. So your artery blood is gonna be bright, bright red because it's oxygenated blood. And the venous blood is gonna be a little bit darker. Okay. Who the heck is that? That amount of force to break through flooring, even if it's really thin flooring, is a lot of force. If you fracture your sternum, fracture your first rib or your scapula, that tells us there was so much force to the thoracic cavity that you have to really worry about internal organ injuries and damage. Run away, run. Oh, he's just coming at her. Oh. We're in a flaming building. You have to worry about one, decreased oxygen and smoke inhalation, and then it's producing all this smoke. A lot of times fires in industrial buildings, homes, they're burning other toxic chemicals. So you increase your risk of having, you know, cyanide poisoning. This episode had a ton of hand injuries, puncture wounds, lacerations, really cool. I hope you guys learned something and I hope you really enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed me reacting to Resident Evil, let me know uh, in the comments. If you're a gamer and you want me to react to some of your gameplay, I'll leave a link below that you can send it to me and maybe I'll include it in my next video. As always, if you guys like this, binge watch all these videos right here, check out this series. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on, hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.